that would be boring. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our mornings in the Word. Yeah, a little bit different today. Phone is dead. I mean, dead, dead. Waiting for a new one. And so we're using the computer this morning, so it's a little bit different. Um, but I think that, yeah, the camera is switched correctly. That's nice. Okay. We're in John chapter 5, and uh, the story about the Pool of Bethesda. We're going to sing, Just As I Am, Without One Plea, number 570. <clears throat> Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to thee, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I am and waiting not to rid my soul of one dark plot to thee whose blood can cleanse each spot, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Just as I have those thoughts about with many a conflict, many a doubt, fightings and fears within, with a little of God I come. I As I had for a jet wine, sight rich as healing of the mind, yea, all I need in thee, not to find, O Lamb of God, I come, I Just as I am, thou wilt receive, wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, relieve, because thy promise I receive, O Lamb of God, I come, I come. Thy love unknown has broken every barrier down. Now to be thine, be thine alone, O Lamb of God, I come, I on the Sabbath. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is in Jerusalem by the Sheep Gate a pool in Aramaic called Bethesda, which has five roofed colonnades. In these lay a multitude of invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. One man was there who had been an invalid for 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there and knew that he had already been there a long time, he said to him, Do you want to be healed? The sick man answered him, Sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up, and while I am going, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, Get up, take up your bed, and walk. And at once the man was healed. 
and he took up his bed and walked. Now that day was the Sabbath. So the Jews said to the man who had been healed, It is the Sabbath, and it is not lawful for you to take up your bed. But he answered them, The man who healed me, that man said to me, Take up your bed and walk. They asked him, Who is the man who said to you, Take up your bed and walk? Now the man who had been healed did not know who it was, for Jesus had withdrawn, as there was a crowd in the place. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you are well. Sin no more, that nothing worse may happen to you. The man went away and told the Jews that it was Jesus who had healed him. And this was why the Jews were persecuting Jesus because he was doing these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father is working until now, and I am working. What do you remember about the Pool of Bethesda? Myself? Yeah. Colonnade. Colonnade. From, from being there. What do you what do you remember seeing there? Not much. No, I, I don't yeah. have a lot of memories of that. That was a difficult archaeological site. Um, so we were at the Temple Mount, and uh, you're coming through the gate, and of course it's all different than it was the time of Jesus. But but you go down the street, and we went to the Church of Saint Anne. You remember that? That's the one where we sang. Oh, okay. No. So you remember that? Okay. Yeah. And it, it, there's this church that was there because of the Pool of Bethesda. Very old church, of course. That's all. Everything's very old uh, in Jerusalem, and <clears throat> um, and this was just an unusually resonant place, just very acoustically live. And so it's fun to go in there and sing. And uh, of course, all the other tourists have to wait for you to finish, so they maybe will do their little group to sing something. But it's the the echoes just go on and on and on. So we spent some time in there. Then we came out. And and across the courtyard there was a pool of Bethesda, mm. but it's <laughs> that's hard. No, it it doesn't strike you as well. I saw the pool of Bethesda because there's no pool there, and there's these archaeological ruins, and it's layer and layer and layer. This is a church from the such and such century. Down the, below that was a church from this century, and below that, and but there's it's this like deep pit, and we went downstairs, and mm. because the original pool of Bethesda was itself already. 30 to 40 feet deep in in places, in parts of it. Um, you don't expect that in in a big city. That, I mean, it's huge. It's a reservoir. It's a, it is a, a, a reservoir of water for the city. Um, there were aqueducts that came across the valley and brought spring water. And, and uh, there were what they called the Pools of Solomon across the 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 uh, valley, Kidron Valley, over towards um, Bethany and Bethlehem. And they brought water to the temple for all the temple stuff that needed to be done. And, and uh, it's one thing that you don't really see as easily in an archaeological site, um, how much work went into handling water. Because most of it's not there any longer. You know, so you look at these things, you see dry structures that look like other structures, um, walls and, and things like that. But they're cisterns and wells and, and uh, water channels. Um, if you recognize what you're looking at, you see that all, all this work to get water. Why so much work to get water? Not just for drinking. That's not what most of this was for. Um, or even bathing or washing things but rather to be clean, to be ritually, spiritually clean. You remember the, the wedding at Cana? These huge jars came containing 30 or 40 gallons of water. And there were, what, seven of them, I think? Um, that's a lot of water to have stored in your house and to have to constantly fill by buckets, you know, and keeping them full. But they, they required water for ritually cleansing things to make sure that they were not spiritually unclean. 
And so the pool of Bethesda <clears throat> is this large body of water that people may dip themselves and come back out and they'll be clean. And so there's a crowd of people around. It's a beautiful place, all these columns, you know, porticos. Uh, but there's, if this is crowded. This is one of what I think of as Jesus' invisible miracles. There's so many that if you really think about what was happening, you could have been 10 feet away and not noticed it at all. You could have been right there. Uh, and, you know, with your back turned and not have seen it or heard it. It's a crowd of people. Jesus is making way, his way through the crowd. There's a conversation with this man that maybe lasts 30 seconds. Do you want to be healed? And oh, I, can't get, I can't get down to the water in time, you know, for this, this miracle that might happen if I get in at the right time. Uh, and Jesus says, take up your bed and walk. And the guy picks up his bed, and then Jesus is gone. He doesn't know who did this. This is so subtle and so quick that it's like, who was that masked man? He's walking off through the crowd, and, and he's gone. And then some people catch this guy. He's busted. You're carrying your bed. It's a, it's a Sabbath day. You can't do that. But the guy told me, what guy? I don't know. A guy who said, he, he said, take up your bed and walk. And so that's what I'm doing. And he healed me. I couldn't walk. Um, well, see to it that it doesn't happen again. <laughs> right? Uh and then, and then Jesus finds him and talks to him again in the temple, where, presumably, the man is in the temple giving thanks to God for his healing. Um, but the, the pool of Bethesda, the, the term, the word Bethesda means house of mercy. Notice who's doing all the work. This man is completely helpless. He's so helpless he can't even he can't even go to get a miracle. He can't just roll off the off of the side and plop into the water at the right time to be healed. Um, he is com completely unable to do anything. Jesus comes in and does all the work. The only thing he tells this guy is, pick up your bed and now do what comes from being healed. Walk. When you're healed, you walk. When you're healed of being lame, you walk, right? Especially, you want to walk. And the, all the efforts of all these people to be clean, all the structures that are, 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 that are built, all the, all the structures that are built to convey water to the place, all the effort to trap water so that we can wash ourselves, uh, all the waiting and the strategizing for who, how to get into the water first to be cleansed or to be healed. All of it's for nothing. Jesus does it all. That's what it means if we live in God's house of mercy. You want to be in God's house of mercy. You don't want to be in the house of judgment or the house of works where you've got to get everything right. You got to make sure you follow the rules and not pick up your bed or do some other forbidden thing on the Sabbath day. You you don't want to be in that place where it all depends on if you get in at the right moment, right? Uh, if you're strong enough to do what you have to do at that at that special time. No, you want to be in the house of mercy, Bethesda, where you depend upon God's grace. For God to give you what he desires to give you at the right time, the time that he plans to give it to you. We wait for God's healing. We no longer wait for God's cleansing and forgiveness. For regardless of all the waters in the world, regardless of all our efforts, God has already done it all. Jesus has done the work for you. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have washed us in Jesus. We didn't need to do anything. We didn't need to find the right body of water. We didn't need to say the right words. We didn't need to, to do it at the right time or the right way. Our baptism, our washing, was your work. You washed us. We did not wash or scrub ourselves to remove our sins. Now all you ask us to do is to do what happens when you're healed, to use our healing.
to glorify you and give thanks. Grant that we may take up our bed and walk, that we may, may walk immediately to your house to give thanks and praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.